The following stream has been approved for all puzzle audiences by the Puzzle General Community. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Cards of the Heart, and this is Puzzle General's Pokemon Puzzle Challenge Speedrun Tournament 2019. And tonight for you, we've got a very compelling matchup to determine who is going to advance in Group B of this group stage. We've got the number three seed, Tame and ND, against the unseeded Infinite Chain. Both players coming in at a 2-0 record so far. Tame and showing his prowess as the Pokemon Puzzle League S Hard world record holder, allowing some of those skills to transition over to Puzzle Challenge quite nicely, and Chain, also with some Pokemon Puzzle League experience serving him well in this tournament. The winner of this match will almost surely end up in the top three seeds in this group to qualify for the main bracket. With six people in each group, I decided to make the top three players in each group move on to the bracket so this match could also prove pivotal for potential buys in the next round because the top seed in each group the top finisher in each group will get an opportunity to uh, not have to play an extra game so that'll be nice and both of these players will with a win will tie FFR Pro 21 atop the standings and get that chance to seize the top seed, though FFR is a very, very strong player and the odds of that happening are low, but the opportunity is there should one of these two seize on it tonight. Both these players have best times that are about 15 seconds apart from what I can remember. I believe Tayman's best time in the hard mode difficulty that we're playing tonight is 8 minutes 48 seconds. And I think Chain has an unofficial like 9 minutes 1 second time somewhere. So I expect this match to be very close. So let us get this match going and let me get some game audio for you guys. Let's see. There, there, there's the thing I need to enable to get you the game sound. So yeah, we are playing in the challenge mode. We are playing to a best of five. So the first player to win three games will win this match. And as I said, both these players have best times that are really close to each other, so... I hope we get to see some really, really close matches here. So let me get these players started so we can get this match underway. Okay, it looks like both players are readied up. We are starting the countdown to this first race. And away we go. Now let me get these players synchronized to give you a more accurate idea of how close these players are. Alright, that's as good as I'm gonna get it. So, this is Pokemon Puzzle Challenge for the Game Boy Color. You may have seen this game, or a variation of this game previously on this channel, as Pokemon Puzzle League or Tetris Attack. Well, this, this is the same base gameplay, except the, uh, the objective is to use your combos and chains to inflict damage to your opponent. You see a health bar on the right side and it does deplete as uh, you do combos and chains and you're going to want to make a mix of combos and chains in order to uh, efficiently deliver enough damage to these foes to 
knock them down. And Tame Man is doing a very great job of demonstrating the effect of combos in your chains. Tame Man's Puzzle League experience definitely lends itself well to being able to incorporate combos in those chains. Alright, nice 8 chain from Tame Man. It's going to be at least a 9 chain to uh, take out each of these foes straight up, but if you make combos in your chains, then you can minimize the number of chains you need. Seems like uh, the infinite chain does not make as many combos in his chains, and right now his chains aren't being all that infinite. His stream is also buffering quite a bit, but that is not something I have control of, unfortunately. But, uh, Chain is getting through these stages about 20-something seconds each. 23 seconds for Tame Man's Ghastly. You kind of want to see these times be under 20 seconds, or if you are really good, under 15 seconds in the early going. I'm not sure how many sub-15 second stages we're going to get to see in this match. This is not... Uh, either of these players' best game in this series. There's been, been a little bit of a, a bit, little bit of growing pains to uh, transition into for both of these players as they learned this game for this tournament. One of the f fine things about this game compared to uh, some of the other games in the series is that you actually can calculate how much damage you are inflicting to your opponents, and you can actually figure out to a T just how much garbage you need to send in order to win. And it's not a luxury that the other games in the series, save for the Game Boy version of Tetris Attack, gives you. So you can come up with a plan, and you can eyeball the opponent's health values a little bit to uh, figure out what it will take to win. So there's a different level of strategy here that you're not going to see with other puzzly games. So here we are, teaming and getting close to uh, extending this lead out to single stage, not quite finding all of the combos within these chains, getting a nice big chain here. Signed to uh, leave it at X8. I think X9 would have killed there. But as you get, as you progress in this mode, these foes will get more and more health. It's a, it's a gradual step up every two stages at the beginning. But uh, here at Dragonair, there's a tiny bit of a step up. So. Would not be surprised. It would not surprise me to see Tame Man struggle just a little bit extra here. You're definitely going to want something big. Tame Man's got an X9 set up here. Cut it off there because after X9, the uh, extra damage from the extra chain link after that does not uh, inflict as much damage. So X9 chains are the most efficient. And here we are at everyone's favorite muse. Should have a give a little advance warning for this one. This is a this is a a love him or hate him foe in Jinx. The reactions to uh, this Pokemon are definitely very different depending on who you ask. Boy, does she love to make noise. A, that was a pretty uh, nice chain that Tamian set up at the end there. Got about 30 seconds out of that stage, which is more or less what you uh, like to see in the Elite Four. Unfortunately, the chain is still buffering a little bit, so it's not entirely certain how close chain is going to be to... Uh, in the stage. Looks like this 5 combo will do it 
for chain, but uh, the deficit has grown to almost a full stage at this point. Damien is about to finish Probat right here, I think. Oh, barely. Barely under 30 seconds. So good for him. Meanwhile, Chain barely getting to the X5, X6, X7. Gets the X quickly going all the way up to X10. Chain does like to keep his chains infinite. And that will be good enough for Chain. That was a very solid Probat time. Speaking of solid time, Tame Man poised to get a big chain on him on top. And make this a good time. 23 seconds. Yeah, that is actually really solid for Hitmon Top, who for whatever reason has the most health of any Pokemon in the game. I, I wish I could uh, find a, a developer of this game, someone on the, on the development team for the game, who uh, could explain why that design choice was made. Just feels weird to me, but. That is what we have to deal with as speedrunners of this game. Okay. Murkrow uh, actually has the fastest power gauge in the game. There is uh, a, a hidden gauge that uh, dictates when these foes can attack, and Murkrow actually has the shortest gauge in the game, so it attacks most quickly compared to everyone else in the game. And that also leads to uh, a mechanic I will allude to later on, but for now, Tayman is on to the final boss of hard mode, Dragonite. Chain just a little bit behind. He's gonna need uh, more screw-ups like that from Tayman in order to take this first race. This is a first to three match. After all, so uh, one race will uh, go a long way towards determining the victor. And there we go. Tame and done. We are using uh, Speedruns Live Race Bot to time these races, and Tame and clocked in at an official time of 8 minutes 22 seconds. So that will give Tame and first blood on this matchup. Unfortunately, Chain uh, is playing other music on his stream besides the game audio, so we can't bring you that audio for this match, and unfortunately it doesn't look like I have the uh, other audio queued up for uh, this streaming too, so, uh, so uh, we're going to be a bit silent as we wait for the infant chain to finish out. Chain does finish out that match, buffering it all in an official race box time, 9 minutes, 17 seconds. So that's going to do it for game one. I, th I think Tane, wait, Tane actually PB there. Yeah, yeah, Tane's best time was like an 8.48. He, he just he just improved his time by maybe 30 seconds. <laughs> oh my goodness. If that's what uh, Chain's going to have to deal with, then uh, he might be in for a little bit of uh, trouble. Oh, there's a, there's a game on. There's the... Uh, there's the soundtrack. How... Where did that? Where did uh, I find that? Oh, uh oh, try to try to have that uh, enabled for when Tayman finishes before Chain, because it's real. Because man, if, if Tayman's gonna get off to that kind of start, it's really looking like Chain has a really, really uphill battle on his hands for getting back into this match. So let me go ahead. Get these players started on their second race. And we'll see if the chain can possibly mount a comeback.
Now, it, it does take an X9 chain straight up to beat Pidgey in Kuna Gear, so you can do this stage in one big chain if you so desire, if, and if you are so able. It looks like a local player is took out Pidgey in about two chains there, which is more or less average. They're both getting through in about 20 seconds, which is just fine. Hey man. Building up this chain. Looking to go X8. It's gonna need to take us all the way to X9. X10 will not be needed. A little overkill, but uh, there is no kill like overkill. Because underkill just does not exist. And when you look at that, Shane was able to uh, pull right back about even with a man. Shane showing a bit of a one second lead going into the fairy eater who uh, does step up in HP. Compared to Pidgey, Kuna just a small amount. So that could be enough. Will that do? Oh, nice, nice little uh, two-frame slide to uh, make that chain and actually uh, save a lot of time. Based on where, uh, based on where uh, Team Man Stack was at at that point. Now, how's Chain gonna deal with Ghastly here? Oops, barely getting around onto the X5. Oh, not quite. Not quite getting the X6. I don't know if we had that one back. And X6 and a 6 combo for Tame Man. Oh, just a little more. Just, just get anything. <laughs> there, there. Four combo is something. It's the smallest something in damage you can get, but uh, it, it is something. Oh, looks like. Looks like Chain could be waiting garbage. Yeah, that, that was that was not something you really want to see. But at the end of the day, you just have to get that image however you can. Damn now working on Steelix. cutting it off with X8. Did not quite really make enough combos, but that four combo at the end will do the trick. And by combos and chains, I mean, I mean combos. You're gonna match more than three at a time. Chains, you're blending sets of three more match at a time. So there's a four combo from today. There's a two chain, three chain, a four combo, four chain, five chain with a four combo, six chain, and seven chain with a four combo. And both of those combos and chains inflict damage to all of these competitors. It's, it's, uh, it's two four combos it makes a, a two chain worth of damage. So, so combos have their purpose. They do inflict damage more immediately than chains do, but the but, but chains will be what you inflict the majority of damage in this match, so better get acquainted with figuring out how to do these chains. Looks like Team Man is going to need one more there. There we go. That will do just fine. Let's see what kind of big chain the infinite chain puts together. It's only an X5. That's going to need a little more work. Maybe in the X4 after that? Not entirely sure. See what, what the team is able to do here. Uh, X6, not quite uh, picking around to the X7. Oh, I think I'm trying to send that chain the hard boy. Awesome, Lily. What's that X4 gonna do? It does. 24 seconds. Team and heading into the Elite 4 at around 5 minutes. That is an adequate pace. You want to see from a harder though, and Tame Man is building up quite a lady now in this game, so in this is best of five. The 
speed, jumping up to over full stage. Same thing keep going on at this pace. It's hard to imagine that he's going to lose even a single game in Smash, even a 30 second jinx. That is not something. Oh no! Oh no! And the chain is a death! Oh, that might be the nail! And the chain is coffin for K2! Oh, you hate to see that! Oh, that is so very unfortunate! And in harder mode, when you lose a Pokemon with a Pokemon, you lose the ability to use that Pokemon for the rest of the mode, so. Chain will be going on with the Syndicate Chain going all the way to X11! That was... That was quite a build! And then that, uh... Enables... Damien Man to, uh... Get up to about a two-stage lead now. And as he, uh... Experiences his hip on top for... The second time tonight. Oh, oh, that was that was a bit awkward to uh, try to send the chain with. But Damien recovering nicely. There we go, another 23 second hit on top. Very, very nice, very nice. What's Chain doing? Chain is just getting the last bit of damage on the Jinx. Combo spamming to victory. That will do just fine. Now, now, what will Team Man do against the quickest draw in the in the, the West? It looks like it looks like he's gonna need a bit more. Oh no, that's a heal. <laughs> that is that is the single biggest thing you have to worry about with foes in this game. Oh my goodness! <laughs> wow, wow, that was a that was a four skill. Like, <laughs> Tayman was left with no panels to make any sort of match whatsoever. And that will, uh, that will, uh, take, that will make, that will make, uh, make Tayman take a death. It, does that possibly work as the break that chain needs? I think this 10 chain from Tayman says no. 21 seconds from, from Murkrow now. Yeah, Murkrow definitely got it for, uh, for, uh, doing that to, uh, to Tay. Yeah, look, looks like, looks like Tay has this game well in hand at this point. As I said, healing is, uh, a thing that these foes can do. If these foes get to below 40%, of their maximum health, and then the next chance they have to attack, they have an opportunity to heal back about 25% of their maximum health. And that is something that will definitely come into play at the higher difficulty levels. It's a bit unusual to see it in hard mode, but it is not uh, out of uh, question. And there we go. Tiny Man finishing. Dragonite there. Wraithbot has clocked in that run at 8 minutes 59 seconds. Very much in line with Tay's best runs b before tonight. So that is that is what uh, Chain is going to have to deal with in order to come back in this match. Not sure how happy Chain is with his performance thus far, but it is here on Dragonite. Building up something. Next five. That's not bad. Gonna need a little bit more. But another chain like that should be enough. Uh, going all the way up to X7 with a 6 combo. Bit of overkill, but no kill like overkill. And that is chain done 
at about 10 minutes 5 seconds by our race bot timer. Oof, and today, man, definitely showing why he is the Pokemon Puzzle League S Hard World Record Holder. Definitely showing why he qualified as the number three seed in this tournament. Definitely one of the forces to be reckoned with going forward, and it seems like a guarantee at this point that he will be moving on to the final bracket. And whether he would be able to get a bye in that final bracket remains to be seen. I don't believe Tayman has yet to schedule his match with the number two seed and the uh, proverbial, proverbial top player in Group B in FFR Pro 21. I will get them to get their match going in the next week because time is really really short to uh, wrap up the group stage. I've set a deadline of August of uh, October 19th. So we're about a week and a half away from getting this group stage wrapped up and moving on to some really high octane action. But we'll uh, see more about that later. Let's get this game three going and see if Chain can uh, save his tournament's bacon here. Because uh, there's no guarantee that Chain will be able to advance into uh, final bracket from here. But a 14 second Pidgey will go a long way to uh, to uh, saving his hide. Tayman not far behind with a 16, but oh man, that that's been the first sub 15 stage we've seen in this match. Oh man, oh man, that is some good stuff. Chain making his chain big here with the next eight, and that's 16 seconds. Tame him, probably gonna need another X3 or something along that stretch. Oh, jeez. Always makes me worry just a little bit when your stack is that high. That close to the top. You do not have uh, infinite time to play around up there. So, uh, you always can't help but worry. Alright, chain going up to X9. This might be a bit too much, so some time will probably be lost here. This will be an opportunity for Tayman to catch up, especially if this goes all the way up to like an X9. And it will. And that will be enough. 18 seconds. Oh, Tayman made up so much ground there. That was. That was probably. Uh, the most important thing you can do to get back in this match. Alright, Chain working on this Ghastly still. Probably gonna need another X4. And I think he, I, I, yep, Chain absolutely cut that chain off at the right time to uh, get that, that chain damage to apply and get the win. Good board awareness, good, good uh, health awareness in general. That was really nice. Now Chain working on this Steelix. Steelix generally very slow to attack, so you tend to have all the time in the world to get in your required damage. Tayman getting down to like an X4 Chain very beginning, getting a little bit more than that. Chain at chain at 30 seconds moves on to Primeape. And Tame in a 31. So this this might be what Chain needs to uh, get going. Maybe Chain is finally warmed up. Oh, 
little bit of an extra swap there. Chain losing that chain. This chain's not being infinite right now. Gonna wish he had that one back. Meanwhile, Tayman going all the way up to X9. Gonna leave it at X9, and that is 19 seconds. That made up so much ground. Oh my goodness. Okay, chain working on an X6 for seal. X8, going to X9, yep, that's X9. Gonna need a little bit more though. Looks like another three chain worth. There's a five combo, there's a four combo, that should do it. Oh, there's a heal! Oh no, what an untimely heal from seal. Oh, that is so unfortunate. That's a break. For Tay Man, and stay with Shane, keeping up 28 for 28. Oh, this is this is what I expected to see from this matchup. These foes, these opponents, are very, very close to each other. The skill level is roughly comparable. Just matter of if the strategy is good. Chain needing multiple chains to beat Dragonair, but but Tayman taking it down about about one chain and change. So so uh wow wow twenty seconds to thirty nine seconds that will allow Tayman to get to get back into the lead and Tayman is on match point here. Chain will take his first loss of the tournament if Tayman keeps up this pace. <laughs> 20 seconds, Jinx! Oof, that is something else. Oh, oh, Chain almost got 20 seconds on Jinx. Just one extra combo, lost a couple seconds there. Yeah, it's really looking like Tayman's gonna need to screw up for Chain to get back into this match. Tay getting a nice X8, X9 Chain here. There were a few, definitely a few combos in there. 19 seconds. Holy smokes. Tayman pouring on his A game right when he needs it most. Oh my goodness, and Chain was not doing all that bad by comparison. But Crobat giving him a couple of fits. And that will allow Tay to extend this lead. Another X9 chain for him on top. Just a couple more a couple more combos might do it here. Oh, there's a heal from him on top. Will that, will that be the break Chain needs? Chain's going for X8. Couple combos for Tay Man. That's 40 seconds. Oh, oh no! This is this is not good for Chain. Chain's gonna need a bit more. Please don't heal him on top. Oh, him on top healed. Oh, that might do it. That might be the actual nail in the coffin. Uh, we'll have to see what happens here. And it really looks like Tayman will be clinching a spot in the final bracket very, very shortly. Oh, a little early on that chain. That would have been enough to win. Just get anything. Just get anything. Oh no! <laughs> Oh, there was a six combo ready for uh, Tayman to to clear out that match, but oh, about probably about 15 seconds was lost as a result of that heal, which is very typical, especially in the later difficulty levels. All right, here we go. Here comes Dragonite. Chain still trying to uh, get this last bit of damage on Murkrow. 
Tayman working on an X8. That's that's about as much as Tayman is going to get. Oh no, Chain lost. Chain lost to Murkrow. 49 seconds in. That is that is very very painful. Tayman needing a lot of chains to get this done. Getting in the last bit of damage. And that will do it. Tayman with an official race bot time of 8 minutes 56 seconds will be taking this match 3-0 and will advance to a record of 3-0 in Group B. Infinite Chain fought well, but we'll have to settle for a record of 2-1 and one after this match. Whew! Oh my goodness, <laughs> that, that match was definitely a lot closer than the score indicated. That most of the time, both players were within within a stage of each other. Many times, both players playing on the same stage at the same time. So that was definitely a good match from both. So let me get this score updated, and then I can show you the updated bracket. So I want to mark that there, there, there. Okay, all right. Let's see if this works. All right, there we go. Tayman officially moving on to 3-0, and all but locking up a spot in the final bracket at this at this point. <laughs> it looks like 3-2 and two is going to be the mark. Tayman already has a win over the Infinite Chain, so that's a good indicator of the tiebreakers he's got and I tried to show group A but but uh, this source is not wanting to cooperate with me very well this is not something you uh, should be doing in real time kids <laughs> All right, okay. All right, here we go. Let, let's let's show what's going on on the other side of the bracket. Yoshimitsu has clinched the first seed with a 5-0 record. Raiko Ryder, unfortunately, dropping out early in the tournament, leaving four players to compete for three spots. And it's, it's everyone's belief that I was gonna be taking the second spot in the group. And uh, there are some matches to be showcased later on featuring me and others in this group. So you have to think it's gonna be either, honestly, it might be either Tetris Attacker or Paratroopa that gets that third spot. And that will be a hotly contested matchup for sure. But speaking of uh, showcase matches, tomorrow night we have got some matches that have been previously recorded in this tournament that we are going to show you. It's a little bit different fare than what we've been doing previously, but uh, as much as I'd like to be able to showcase all of these matches live as they happen, people's schedules don't usually allow for that. So we have had to record some matches ahead of time, and tomorrow we will get to bring you a couple of those matches that have taken the place. Both of them involving our number six seed, Razor Flame Coon. Not only will uh, his match against our number three seed, Tayman, who just advanced to 3-0 and in the group stage be shown, but uh, we'll also get to see him in the very first match that was actually played in this tournament. My match against Yoshimitsu was the first to be broadcast but, uh, but uh, the second match you'll see tomorrow was the first match ever recorded. So it is, it is going to be an important one, and I promise you, you will not want to miss that. It's probably the most compelling you will see in this group stage. So that's going to do it for me and everyone else at Puzzle General this evening. This has been Cards of the Heart, and until next time, everyone... 
Thanks for watching.